Hey, and welcome to another KC Coding tutorial. Uh, this tutorial is going to cover a lot of different subjects when it comes to photo editing. So you can click the annotations on the side to uh, skip around to different positions. Uh, that way, you, if you only need to learn something about red eye reduction, uh, you can do that. And uh, if you want to learn the whole package, just uh, sit tight and watch. So, uh, the first thing you want to do is navigate to the photo you want to start editing. Um, preferably one that has a red eye, because that's going to be one of the things we're going to be working on. And uh, yeah, so you can just pause the video and uh, pull up any image that you want to start working on. Alright, so uh, I'm going to start now. So, one of the first things you might want to do is uh, turn a photo. Now, uh, sometimes when you take a photo sideways with your camera, it's not going to orient it, uh, depending on how old your camera is. So, now, where you want to look to uh, reorient photos is uh, right on the bottom bar, right above email, it says uh, rotate clockwise and rotate counterclockwise. Now, of course, that works just how you think it would work, right? You can uh, spin your photos around so that they match the right direction. All right, so uh, that's how you spin photos around. Next, uh, we're going to do uh, red eye. So now, if you look on the bar on the left-hand side, you have basic fixes, tuning, and effects. So we're going to go through uh, most of these um, basic fixes. So we'll click on red eye. Now, the nice thing about this is that it actually uh, identifies where red eye could be and uh, picks those areas for you. Now, as you can see, it's put uh, green boxes around both the eyes. Um, if it accidentally selected something like a pendant or something that was a bright red, and you don't want that, what you can do is you can just click on one of the green boxes, and it'll get rid of it. See how it uh, put that back there? And, uh, of course, I can just uh, drag. If uh, it misses an eye, I'll just get rid of that again. Now, if it misses an eye, you can click and drag over top of the eye, and it'll put red eye reduction on that eye. So now uh, on the side here, you can just click apply and your settings will be saved. So that looks a lot nicer already. Okay, so the next option is uh, you can crop photos. Now uh, to crop a photo, just click on crop. It's uh, right in the top uh, left hand corner of that bar. And now what you can do is you can actually choose different sizes. And these are set sizes, and the reason why that's important is then you can bring it to a printer like uh, your local print shop or your local uh, your local photo developer, and they can make you nice looking prints based off this. So um, let's say I want to take this photo and turn it into a 4x6, which is just like your standard photo, right? Now I can just click and drag, and it will keep it in the correct, uh, what's called the correct aspect ratio, which means that this will always be 4x6 uh, inches. And you can just drag, and uh, you can uh, pull on the edges just to get the exact shape and size that you want. So that's uh, it's actually pretty easy. You uh, just go over that again. Uh, if you click cancel, you can leave without making any changes and uh, just go back to crop. I'll just show you one more time. So with a four by six, I can click anywhere on the photo and begin dragging, and it will keep my frame, which is uh, uh, what I'm going to crop out, in the right ratio. So that it's ready to be printed. So I'm just going to go right at the top there and uh, just cut out some of the people around uh, around our subject here. So uh, just like uh, with red eye reduction, you click apply to save this change, and you can see our, our changes have been made. Okay, so this part is for straightening photos. Now just right again, right next to the cropping and the red eye is straightened. Now, this is better for landscapes because you can tell what is straight and what isn't. In this photo, you can't really tell what, uh, like, where the floor is, so you can't straighten it. You can just you can just straighten it for fun though, and you can uh, you can play with that. So I'm just going to show you how it works. When you click on straighten, it's going to put these grid lines on them here, and what happens is you can pull the slider around, and it will twist the photo while zooming in and out, so that. It's the exact right way. So now if I wanted to, uh, let's say that I just wanted to make it so that she looked like she was looking just straight. I can line that up like that. And then now the apply button isn't where it normally is. It's actually right next to the slider. So you can just hit apply and that'll work. And of course you can hit cancel and the changes won't be saved. All right, so now the next few things all have to do with uh, changing color settings. So uh, right here, there's the I'm feeling lucky, which will change all the colors for you. It'll basically, um, it's an automatic fixer. And uh, auto contrast will do the same thing. And uh, auto color will do the same thing, except auto contrast only works with contrast. Auto color only works with color. 
but if you click I'm feeling lucky, it does both at once. So we're just going to click on that. And see, the thing is, is that sometimes that works uh, nicely, but as you can see here, it lights up our subject too much. And uh, it makes her skin look extremely pale and strange. And see how, uh, see the effect that it gives to the hair? It looks almost green now. Now, if you don't like the changes that uh, any of these auto uh, correctors have made, you can just click undo in the corner here, uh, right by where all the other buttons are. So I'm just going to do that because this photo didn't work out that well. And there, that's much better already. All right, now for retouch, what retouch is good for is getting rid of uh, scratches on photos or uh, blemishes on your subject. Now, if you just click re um, retouch, uh, it brings you to this screen here. And what you can see is that uh, our subject has like the odd freckle here, which really isn't a big deal. But for the sake of example, I'm just going to replace them with uh, other. Basically, what it does is it copies other parts of her. I can do is. Basically what I can do is copy other parts of her cheek over top of the blemish and it will blend it so that you don't see those blemishes anymore. Now if I just click on one of these blemishes, all I need to do is drag my, uh, drag my brush onto a clear area and then click again. Now that will, uh, that will cover up the first place I clicked with what is at the second place I clicked. Now just to make this make more sense, if I click on a blemish and then I click on her hair, you can see that her hair is now like a circle on her cheek and that's just silly. So I'll just pick another spot on her cheek and click. Now uh, this is really good for if you have uh, scratched up photos or, um, or dust on photos that you can't get off and you scan those photos. So uh, this can uh, help, uh, help restore some of those older, older photographs. So you can just click apply just like all the other ones and it uh, applies those changes. Now if you want, you can actually add a uh, simple text to this. So if you just click the text, now you can basically uh, just put in whatever text you'd like. You, the, it's pretty self-explanatory. You basically click wherever you'd like to start typing on the page and you just, uh, just write whatever you want to. Alright, see, so that's uh, really not that bad. On here on the side, you can change things like uh, what font it's in. Uh, you can also change uh, different things about uh, if, there's a, if there's a border around the text, um, what color the text is. It gets very, very specific, and you can change everything uh, to your liking. Now you can see here that you can even change the rotation and the size of it when you go over top of it. So it's, uh, it's a pretty intuitive system, and I don't think most people have much trouble with it. Um, just remember that to change the size, you hover over top of this and to uh, change different uh, things about the font, like the color or the glow around it, you just have to uh, do that on the left. So uh, once again, you just click apply and uh, you're all good. So that, uh, that covers basic, uh, basic fixes. Um, now if you want to go into tuning so you can uh, add, uh, add fill light, um, if you want to uh, add highlights, it's um, it's it's not really the easiest thing to work with, um, you know. And if th this is really if you're um, a little bit more professional about what you're doing, and for the most part, if you're professional, you're not really going to be working that much with Picasso. You might be using a you might be using Lightbox or a couple other different um, uh, a couple other different programs. So I'm just going to leave tuning out of this for now because it's uh, not the easiest thing to work with. And uh, under effects, of course, there's uh, some fun effects. Uh, these are more uh, not really the sort of thing that you'd normally use, but just kind of gags. So um, if uh, we wanted to make it uh, sepia or sepia toned, we can do that to make it look like an old, uh, an old worn out photo, or uh, black and white, or uh, we can tint it actually. You can pick a color. Now uh, this is sort of the thing that you can't really, uh, you can't really teach that well. You really just need to, you just need to play with it for a little while and uh, get the feel for it. So there's interesting things like focal black and white, which makes everything black and white except within a certain area. So I can make her face light, but uh, make the background dark. So it's really just something you can play with. So uh, yeah, I'd uh, definitely recommend just uh, just playing around with some of these. Um, but yeah, that, the, that's the major fixes, is uh, just the basic stuff. So um, yeah, uh, if you've uh, missed anything, I'll put the annotations back on the side so you can rewatch parts. And uh, yeah, for Casey, for Casey Coding, I'm logging off.